In my last few projects, I was using this ESP32C3 microcontroller. I was well impressed with it because it offers similar resources to regular ESP32. It's tiny and at the same time it offers built-in OLED display. So I will definitely be using it. Wait, wait, stop. What just happened there? Have you seen it? Have you noticed that while I was talking to you, the sketch that was running on this microcontroller was suddenly replaced by the completely different one? How is it even possible? This microcontroller is connected to the 5V power adapter, not the USB port of my computer. Do you want to know how I did it? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Or maybe I will, if you promise that you are going to stick till the end. To enable OTA over the air uploads, we first need to load an OTA initialization sketch. Before we do that, we have to install the OTA library in the Arduino IDE. I will include a link to the GitHub page where you can download the zip file for the installation. Right now the ESP32C3 is connected to the PC via USB cable and in the Arduino IDE it appears as a serial port, which you will need to select. I will go through this code in detail in just a moment. Once this initialization sketch is uploaded, the board becomes OTA ready. This sketch makes ESP32C3 broadcast itself as a network port that appears inside the Arduino IDE. After this we no longer need the initial sketch. We can disconnect the board from the computer and power it externally, either with a 5V adapter through the USB port or using 5V and ground pins. Since the USB cable is no longer connected, the serial port in the Arduino IDE will disappear. To make sure the network port works correctly, restart the Arduino IDE. When it loads, you should still see the ESPC3 available as a network port. Now I'll take a sketch that I wrote for this board in the previous video. It displays Hello World text on a built-in OLED display. To upload this sketch over OTA, we need to add a few OTA related lines so that the microcontroller stays OTA enabled even after the new code is uploaded. I will explain these changes in detail as well. Once the code is updated to support OTA, select the network port in the Arduino IDE instead of the serial port. When you start the upload, the IDE will communicate with the board over Wi-Fi, establishing a connection. After the handshake is complete, the code is transferred wirelessly to the ESP32C3 and you'll see the results on the OLED screen. The board remains OTA enabled and the network port stays active for future uploads. Now if I take another sketch, this one for displaying a bitmap on the OLED screen and add the same OTA related lines to it, I can upload it over OTA in exactly the same way. The IDE will establish a connection, perform the handshake and transfer the code. As you can see, the updated sketch runs correctly. But now let's rewind and imagine we upload a sketch without OTA changes. The upload itself will still work, but once it's finished, the board will no longer be OTA enabled and the network port will disappear from the Arduino IDE. At that point, if you want to upload a new code, you will need to reconnect the board to the PC to bring back the serial port. And if you want to return to OTA uploads, you will have to upload OTA enabled sketch again through the serial connection. So now let's look at the code, starting with the initialization sketch, the one that enables over the air updates on ESP32. At the top, the Wi-Fi and Arduino OTA libraries are included. Next, two character strings store the Wi-Fi network name and password. Inside the setup function, the ESP32 connects to the Wi-Fi network using those credentials, and the loop waits until the connection is fully established. Once connected, Arduino OTA begin activates the over-the-air update service. The loop function continuously calls Arduino OTA handle, which listens for incoming OTA upload requests from the Arduino IDE. With this minimal code running, the ESP32 becomes discoverable on the network and can receive firmware updates wirelessly. Now let's move to the changes you need to make in every sketch to enable OTA for the future uploads. We'll go through them using the Hello World sketch from my previous video as an example and we'll simply add the pieces needed to enable wireless updates. 
We'll begin with the Wi-Fi connectivity elements. These must be added only if the original sketch was not already an IoT project. If Wi-Fi support is already present in your code, these lines will usually already be there in some form. First, we include the Wi-Fi library so the ESP32 can communicate over the network. Next, we define the network name and password. And in the setup, we start the Wi-Fi connection and wait until the ESP32 successfully joins the network. Now for the OTA logic. We include the Arduino OTA library and add the same two OTA lines you saw in the initialization sketch. The one that starts the OTA service and the one in the loop that handles incoming updates. And that's it. Just these small additions give this Hello World sketch full OTA update capability for all future uploads. So all that was theory. Now let's see if this actually works. Before we jump in, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay, your preferred choice for PCB manufacturing and prototyping. PCBWay is running a Christmas sale. You can get purple, pink or matte black PCBs at no extra cost. For 3D printing with transparent resin or Somos Lido, they are offering 20% off the printing service and an additional 10% off the resin material itself. And on top of that, you can collect coupons worth up to $435. So if you want to take advantage of this Christmas offer, just click the link above and allow PCBWay to help you improve your projects. Here we have our microcontroller connected to the USB port of my laptop. In the Arduino IDE I have the initialization sketch ready and I can see the USB connection as serial port 6. No other ports visible. Let's load this code and make the microcontroller capable of receiving over-the-air updates. The upload is completed. Now let's disconnect the microcontroller from the PC and power it from the 5 volt adapter. The ESP microcontroller should be now OTA ready and it should broadcast itself as a network port. I am going to restart the IDE to make sure the microcontroller gets a fresh connection. The IDE is now restarted. We'll use the Hello World sketch that we previously adjusted for over the air uploads. Now that the IDE is freshly restarted, let's check if the network port is still available. And as you can see, it is there. Let's start the upload. And we get an error. So what's the problem? I will show you the solution, but for me, this meant spending a few hours digging through various forums. I saw many people reporting the same issue. Suggestions pointed to router settings, Windows firewall settings, antivirus software, but none of these fixes worked. When I was close to giving up, I came across this forum post that described my exact problem, and it mentioned something different. It said the issue could be caused by the network setting of my hotspot. Specifically, it said that if the network is set to public, OTA won't work, and switching it to private should fix the problem. Let's check. And yes, my hotspot is set to public. Let's change it to private and try to upload again. This time it works. You can see that the upload progress looks a bit different compared to uploading through the serial interface. The upload is now complete and you can see the Hello World text on the OLED display. Our first over the air upload. The sketch is loaded and the microcontroller should still be able to receive uploads over the air. Let's test that using a sketch from one of my previous videos, the one that displays the time on the OLED display synchronized with the internet. This sketch was already IoT ready, so it already contains the sections responsible for connecting to Wi-Fi. All I need to do is manually add the three OTA lines and we should be all set. There, we can now upload the sketch and see if the upload works. And it does. Now let's try something different. Let's take the most basic blink sketch 
the one that blinks the onboard LED with no OTA related lines and upload it through the network port. Will that upload work? It does. The LED blinks, so the sketch works. The OLED display still shows the last time snapshot because the buffer hasn't been reset. But if I restart the microcontroller, the OLED display won't show anything. But now we have created a situation where the OTA connection should be broken, meaning we shouldn't be able to use the network port anymore. Let's try to upload the clock sketch again. Before we do that, let's check if the network port is still listed. And as you can see, it's there. The upload has started. And as you can see, the IDE can't establish a connection to that port. So even though the network port still appears in the IDE, it's no longer valid. After restarting the IDE, it will disappear entirely. So everything behaves exactly like in our slide presentation. So the mission for this video is accomplished. But there is one important downside. You are no longer able to debug your sketches using Serial Monitor. So to make over-the-air uploads truly practical, you need to come up with a way to debug your sketches over the air as well. Since this video is already too long, I'm going to cover this topic in a separate video. I'm already working on it and once released, the link to that video should be visible somewhere around here. You can also check my other ESP-related projects. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and share. Subscribing is always a good idea. You can support my channel through membership, Patreon, PayPal or Coffee. joining these wonderful people that already support my channel. I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao!